Gracious Spirit, we are Our lesson comes from the book of Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9, concerning the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, otherwise we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. Here ends our lesson. Our lesson comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21, concerning the coming of the Holy Spirit. 
When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear? each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends our lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. John, the 14th chapter, verses 8 through 17 and 25 through 27. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not... Then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. This weekend we have the red paraments and celebrate uh, Pentecost in our Christian tradition. So the title of our message is, from the first reading, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of 
all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, sisters and brothers, um, throughout this season of Easter, we talked about Easter as not just a day, but a whole season of seven weeks a week of weeks, a feast of weeks, and seven times seven, the number seven biblically is the number four, perfection and fullness and wholeness. And so uh, seven times seven is the Easter season, and then on this day, the Easter season comes to an end, and we have Penta from the word five, the 50th day, the Feast of Pentecost. And what we forget is that because we Christians come out of Judaism, this was a Jewish festival originally, Pentecost, and they called it Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. And it came 50 days after the Passover event, and it was for Jews, a time when they remember Moses going up Mount Sinai and receiving the Ten Commandments and the Torah, um, and that is what Jews celebrate on this day. But also for Jews in Palestine, it was the season of the barley harvest, the barley festival. So for those reasons, um, 2,000 years ago, Jews from all over the ancient world gathered in Jerusalem for this great feast or festival of Pentecost. And that is when today's first lesson from the book of Acts happened. They were all gathered together and Jesus's disciples, followers, men and women, as the, our cover art shows, women were also present. Mary, Jesus' mother, was there. And they were all together in one place, it said, and the Holy Spirit came upon them like the rush of a mighty or violent wind. And tongues appeared upon all of them, and all those present could understand them speaking as in their own language. Maybe because it was a barley festival, maybe, you know, hops come from barley, maybe there was drinking, who knows. But those who heard it, some of them made fun of the apostles uh, and the disciples of Jesus and said, oh, they must have had too much wine. And Peter says, no, no, this is to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Joel, that in those last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. So this day of Pentecost is about the coming of the Holy Spirit in this mighty, powerful way after Jesus's ascension, um, we know after he resurrected, he said to his disciples, he appeared to his disciples for 40 days. And then on the 40th day, he ascended to his father, but he told his disciples, wait here until you have received, been clothed with power from on high. And he was speaking about this coming of the Holy Spirit in a new and powerful way. And of course, the word for spirit in Hebrew is ruach. It's a feminine, it's a she. And it means both wind and breath and spirit. And in the Greek of the New Testament, the word is pneuma, with a silent P at the front, so it looks like pneuma, but it's pronounced pneuma. And again, it stands for breath, wind, spirit. 
So the Holy Spirit is as close to us as our very next breath and lives and breathes within us as the breath of life. But sisters and brothers, the Holy Spirit is also this powerful, mighty, violent wind, which we can see in, in storms and hurricanes and tornadoes when we see the force and the power of wind, the mighty Holy Spirit. And that is what we celebrate this day. So for Christians, uh, Jesus said, wait till you've been clothed with power from on high. And then this day of Pentecost is seen as the birth of the Christian church because after being clothed with that power, after being um, having the Spirit breathe in them and empower them, then all of the disciples went out to share that gospel message, the message of God's saving love in Jesus Christ with all the world. So, today we as Christians, um, we, you heard the powerful readings for this day, and as I read through the readings this year in preparation for this Pentecost weekend, two things came to me. Um, and the word all, all, I will pour out my, they were all gathered together in one, one place. And the prophet Joel, and then repeated in the book of Acts, uh, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all, all flesh. So the two things that struck me about our readings this year for Pentecost is that word all and having to do with one, the sort of the radical um, equality and um, democracy of um of the Holy Spirit, that it, it's, it's within all of us. Um, no one's higher or lower or better, like everyone has access to this Holy Spirit. And then the second kind of related thought is from the gospel, um, and it has to do with the incarnation, um, with seeing God's presence in all all, um, seeing God incarnate in all. So we're going to focus briefly on those two things. So we'll start with the um, radical equality and democracy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the prophet Joel and also the book of Acts says, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Um, now that was radical because we remember, you know, first century, um, Palestine, women were not equal in any way, shape or form. Um, and, and Jesus and this new Christian movement, um, brought about this radical equality for all people, including women. And even, um, in my lifetime, I, um, I felt called to ministry as a teenager and women were not ordained in our Lutheran church until I was 10 years old. So um, thankfully, by the time I felt called to ministry, it was a new thing, but women now could be ordained. So this passage from Joel and also from the book of Acts was used to advocate for women's ordination and for women's equality. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your youth shall see visions and your old people shall dream dreams, male and female, young and old, even upon, my, upon slaves, there were slaves in biblical times, very different from, um, slavery here in the U.S. It was either because of being conquered by war 
or from debt. But anyway, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, your sons and your daughters, your youth and your old, even upon slaves, both male and female, I will pour out my spirit. Woo! And, uh, and even that it's on all flesh, when I looked up that word, it's the Greek word sarx, and it means literally like body, like flesh. So it can refer to animals as well. And I love that idea. Many people talk about um, how important um, animals are in this scheme of life. But God's spirit is on and upon and within animals and with every living thing. All creation has the spirit of God in it. Um, when I mentioned last weekend um, that we, this weekend we'd be celebrating Pentecost, a new person said, are you saying that we're Pentecostal? And I didn't know how to answer that because no, we're not part of the Pentecostal church, um, which came about like in the early 1900s and is based very much on this event and on, um, on the Holy Spirit coming upon all people. And anyone who's been baptized with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Spirit's presence, is then kind of commissioned to go and share that message with others. So uh, a radical um, democracy and equality among the followers of Jesus, among Christians. And so we are not part of the Pentecostal church, we're part of the Lutheran church, but we also believe in this event of Pentecost and that the Holy Spirit comes upon all of us um, to share that with others. Um, Friday, this Friday, uh, at Bible study, we were talking, we were reading the, we we're starting the Gospel of Luke, and we were reading um, about when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and told her she was going to have the Christ child. And she said, how can this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel Gabriel responded, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And we were all speak, speaking of how, um, in a sense, we are all invited to be like Mary and to let this uh, Holy Spirit come upon us and the power of the Most High overshadow us. Um, and one of the people in Bible study mentioned that um, she was not baptized till she was an adult. But even after that, she said it wasn't really until she was in her 50s that she was baptized with the Holy Spirit, that she had this powerful experience of the Holy Spirit coming upon her and filling her and leading her to take a completely new direction in her life. So um, that is what this day of Pentecost is really all about. The Holy Spirit comes upon us, um, upon all of us, upon all flesh, all creation, and it comes upon us in power, right? You will be clothed with power from on high. Um, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So it's about power, but not human power, spiritual power. And um, this week, we also watched a film in which a, a Jesuit priest spoke of the Holy Spirit as that 
energy, that interconnecting energy in the Trinity that exists between Father and Son and that exists in our human relationships today. And this priest said this interconnecting energy power that we call love. So God, the Holy Spirit, is power and love, interconnecting love. And that brings me to the gospel. Uh, Philip says to Jesus in today's gospel, uh, Jesus, show us the Father and we will believe. Show us God and we will believe. And Jesus is baffled. He says, Philip, I've been with you all this time and you still say, show us the Father. Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen God. And then Jesus said, um, if you don't believe me, believe like the works I've done. Believe the way I've been living. And Jesus said, and, and greater works than these will you do because I now have returned to the Father, am returning to the Father, and will send that spirit, that power, that interconnecting energetic energy of love, right? And so that brings us full circle to, um, to the fact that the Holy Spirit comes upon all, right? It's about equality, it's about democracy, but it also means it's about the incarnation that, that we see God's presence in all, in everyone, in everything. And, and I love that conversation between Philip and Jesus because Jesus is saying, you know, God's not this thing out there, this power, this force out there, but God is right here before your eyes in the person sitting beside you, um, in your human relationships with all their difficulties and challenges and joys and blessings, the Holy Spirit is right here. So sisters and brothers, this day, may we open ourselves as those early disciples and let ourselves be clothed with this power from on high. May we let the Holy Spirit come upon us and the power of the Most High overshadow us. And may we um, share, be empowered therein to share the message of God's saving love with this world and in all we encounter, um, remember that the Holy Spirit, that breath of life, is in all. And in the incarnation, right, God's presence is in all. Sons and daughters, young and old, male and female, human and non-human, all living, breathing beings, all of life, the whole cosmos is filled with the breath of God, the Holy Spirit. Amen.
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.